Morning. So, well, I think it's afternoon now. I've just got back from the market. I've just uh, haven't unloaded my calves yet. I bought some calves, um, and I've just been down to check the pullets because the pullets arrived yesterday for that shed that we've been cleaning. So they've arrived. They look good. High lines, I think they are around about 18 weeks old. So it's quite chuffed with them. Uh, I just went to check that their water was uh, all working because last thing I want is them to run out of water. So I'm gonna. I've got 13. Unfortunately, I lost a calf, that little blue. Um, I lost, it died. Uh, a friend thinks it might have had a twisted stomach. I don't know. It just didn't drink milk one day and then 24 hours later it died. I, I gave it antibiotics. And... So these, these things happen, don't they? But. So I needed I needed 13, which is what I got. I've got 13 calves from the market. So we'll get them unloaded, make some pens, and uh, have a look at them. So there we are, they're all in and uh, settled, they've already laid down. Uh, mostly Herefords, again, I don't know what's happened to Angus, you know, as you can see from our top yard, we only ever used to get Angus, most of these are Angus, but just, at the moment it's, it seems like the markets are just full of Herefords, there's no, there's hardly any Angus to choose from. I tried to persevere and get some, but the Angus that I've got, the, which are these, there's two in here, I think I got three all together, they, they're not very good, not very good calves, I mean, you can get far better Hereford calves for the money, and I don't know whether there's a lot in it at the end now, between Her Hereford and Angus, yeah, don't know, don't know what's happened to the, uh, to all the Angus bulls. So anyway, I got a load of these got a load of these red Herefords, which I think are really smart things. I don't know whether they're out of jerseys or what, but they're all there was about seven I think all from one farm. And then that one there is stable stabilizer. That was the last one I bought. I paid the most for him because he was a smart thing. I think it's about a month old. Um I've always just fancied trying to so we know which one the noisy one is anyway, it's number 30. So yeah, I've just whipped up these pens, I need to go and make some brackets really, it's just still haven't got around to doing. Um, but yeah, I'm quite pleased overall. I didn't think they were a bad price, so they were, they were cheaper than they cheaper than they were last week or the same price but a better quality calf if you see what I mean so I was quite quite pleased so I've got a full house again now I've got 18 which is well it's the biggest house I've ever had last last bunch last bunch was a 12 it's no use trying to talk in here is it so right I'm going to take this trailer and park it away and then I'll go and do my morning egg jobs because I'm going to 
I'm very behind now. Um, yeah, my bunch of my bunch of three that I uh, separated to, to leave on milk. Aren't they? Well, I don't understand what's wrong with them. Really, they seem to have got a bit of ringworm, which is really knocking them back. I don't know. Is there anything you can do to treat them? Or is it? Or can you vaccinate them? I don't know. Probably a bit late for that, but yeah, they've just got it round on bad. And is even some of the older ones have, have got patches of ringworm all over their heads. I don't know where it's come from. It's come in from somewhere because I didn't have any in here before, so it's come in with some calves. But the last batch of calves that come in don't seem to be don't seem to have it. So yeah i don't know what to do about that because it's really knocking them back any any uh progress that they would be making from continuing on milk is being hindered by this ringworm all over, all over them so it's a shame really because they're really uh, falling behind the other bunch that are well away now but anyway so the uh, regulator uh, accumulators come for the uh, loader for the loader tractor. So I need to get the hydraulic guy to come and try and plumb it in. It's quite heavy, it's quite heavier than I thought it would be. So I might have to come out and see what he says about where to put it and then I don't know whether I've got to make a bracket or something for it to go on. So I've got the loader track the loader on the tractor now because I went and fetched a load of bales with it last night, so I'll have to see if he'll come and have a look. Right, well, keep going on with my jobs. Yeah, just looking at this muck. This is what I tried to heap up into a bit of a peak to, so the water would run off. Well, it clearly hasn't worked. It's, uh, it's all run right under, under the fence, so it will fail. It's all just gone like slop. It did actually come out of the shed quite dry, that stuff. But it's like slurry now. Yeah, I just run this heater the other day when the pullets arrived, yesterday. Uh, just for 20 minutes or so before they arrived, just to put a bit of warmth in the shed. Because they're coming out of a, um, a heated shed. So there'll be 20 degrees where they've come from. Um, and it was only, I think it was around about 10 degrees yesterday morning in the shed. So I just ran it just to bring the temperature up. I think I think the temperature came up to about 16 degrees. Um, and then I've obviously got all the vents and everything shut because it's always cold to start with, with new hens because there's no muck or anything to stop uh, any of the drafts or create any heat. So it worked, it worked all right. So when I went in last night, I think it was 18 degrees it got up to with just the temperature of the uh, hens after I'd warmed it up. So. That'll do, I'll go and put it away now. It got rained on last night because I forgot to put it away. So, yeah, handy things, that one runs off diesel. I think I do it, you know, every every to every flock now, just warm the shed up. It really does seem to get them off to a running start rather than being thrown into a cold shed and then just, you know, they lose a lot of weight just trying to stay warm because they're eating to stay warm rather than continuing to grow, if you get what I mean. So, put this away. Yeah, so this, uh, we've got the glass put in the uh, top of this digger. My sister went and picked it up uh, yesterday. So, uh, Mark's glued it in. But looking at it, it looks as though there is a bit of daylight under here. Uh, this, I don't think this piece of metal is quite straight, so uh, Mark, Mark was a bit stingy with the uh, glue, so I'm pretty sure the top is alright and the sides look alright, so I might just go along with the glue gun and just fill in the, along the bottom. Um, I don't think any water will get in it, but like Mark said, you don't want any wind getting in if you like towing it on the motorway and bloody... Um, popping the glass out, so I mean the speed I tow it, I don't think that's going to happen, but you never know. So yeah, that's nearly ready to go. I was going to change the oil in the filters, but looking at them, it's only done about 300 hours since um, they were last done, but it was nearly two years ago, so 
I don't know, I might just do a little bit more with it first before we uh, change the oil again. Uh, apart from that's ready to go, one of the two teeth on that two foot bucket is, uh, is cracked, so I might just go try to weld that up before it snaps itself off. But yeah, on the whole, we're getting there slowly. Had a reasonably good day. I've just fed the calves. I had to feed the ones that were already that have been here a week, so I did just offer a bit of milk to all of them, and most of them drank to be fair, so they've all settled down now, and I've got everything tied up and uh, put some new brackets on, so yeah, quite pleased with the day. I'm going to try and get to bed in good time, because I've had a couple of late nights, and it just uh, wears you out after a while. I'm hoping one of these gates, I bought these gates in a, in a uh, lot of three, same sale as I bought the everything else, the greenhouse and everything. And uh, I was sort of hoping one or two of them might be all right, but there's one there that doesn't look too bad. So I'm, that might replace that one that I keep having to weld up in the cattle shed because it's just not a very strong gate. So I'm, I might, I just need to find a latch for that one, that one in the middle. And I think that'll do the job. This one on the top's probably not that much better than the, uh, and a bit of a gap in a hedge filler, but anyway. So, yeah, uh, I've had a couple, just looking at the comments from the last video, to, a couple of people suggested um, using uh, the, this new shed as a chicken shed, or I hadn't even really thought about that. So it's interesting. Um, last year, when we were really short of eggs, when there was a bit of a well, there was a bit of a, well, maybe worldwide egg shortage. I was seriously considering building another, well, you know, setting up another hen shed because you could sell eggs for fun, you know, and make reasonable money on them. But job's settled down a bit now. It's still good. I mean, the egg job, you can't complain really, especially with the feed price dropping, but that's not going to last forever. I don't know. I mean, at the moment, I'm selling like I've got four sheds, and I'm selling three and a qu three and two quarters, uh, three and three quarters of you know what. When I'm fully stocked, I can sell for you know good price. So, in an ideal world, I'd have four full all the time. So you could have five sheds and just keep one empty, you know, and overlap them so that you uh, you had continuously four sheds producing, but. Now I'm going to ramble on now a bit about chicken, so I apologise if you're not really in the chicken job, but from what I've learned from talking to other people, um, what's in trend now in, in laying sheds is these tiered systems where you have quite a tall shed and they have like, you know, multiple layers of nest boxes and feeders and drinkers and everything. And then they have like a, a big scratch area on the floor uh, and then underneath your racks of um, nest boxes the, you have big conveyor belts which are conveying muck out out of the shed you know sort of every day that seems to be the trendy thing to do if you if you just have a single span like what we've got but in a solid shed when you come to muck it out you have two-thirds of your shed um, with slatted floor which are stood on like from what I gather plast like plastic legs holding your floor you know a couple of feet off the ground so when you come to muck it out you have to dismantle the whole shed which means all the nest boxes all the floor all the drinkers all the feeders and the feeders are normally chains so you've got to like disconnect all your chains and it's like a massive job it's you know it's not I moan that it takes me a while to turn around my shed but compared to Say if I had like a 2,000 bird shed, fixed shed, with just a single layer of um, nest boxes, you know, it'd, take, it'd probably take me two weeks on my own just to get it all empty and then you wash it and then you've got to put it all back together. It's serious, serious amount of labour and it's really put me off. <laughs> you know, what, I've, the, what the way we do it, where we just literally drag the shed away from the muck, wash everything without taking it really anything apart um, is actually a really efficient way of doing it compared to some of these old uh, sheds which is why a lot of 
a lot of these people that haven't got these modern tiered sheds are just not bothering restocking them because of the work involved. So that's something to consider. Um, ideally, you know, in a night it'd be lovely to have a really tall shed or with a, sh a shed with a big pit underneath it so you could leave your, your floor and your, you know, your false floor and your nest boxes and everything in the shed, wash them in place and get something underneath like a little loader like mine or a skid steer underneath your slats and take the muck out without having to dismantle it. I've heard of those, but again, you're talking quite a big uh, setup with inter infrastructure. So there, there's my rant about my thoughts about chicken sheds. I think those polytunnels are actually quite a decent way of doing it, but I'm not really thinking about putting another one of them up just now. I've sort of I spend enough time out of my day um, dealing with eggs as it is, and it's. I don't know. I think if we ever wanted to keep more, to do more eggs, I'd need a better way of, um, um, what's the word, handling them, um, grading them, packing them. Because at the moment I do everything by hand, and it's just very labour intensive. So I don't. That's what I need to uh, sort of invest in if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna ever keep more chickens. So. But no, good I good suggestion. I hadn't even really thought about that for this chicken shed. Um, it's not really a bad, a stupid idea at all. But they are. That's my thoughts anyway. Um, a couple of people um, saying that the uh, glass might not be a good idea because of storms. We don't have a lot of uh, trouble with because we've got a lot of trees and stuff around here. It's not actually the wind that does the damage to the the, um, the glass. It's just the actual trees, branches falling off the trees, and you don't necessarily need a storm for that. You just need a bloody breezy day and a, and a rotten branch. So yeah, I wouldn't really. It's not going to be ideal with this tree. I mean, I'd love to just get rid of that tree, but um, you keep taking trees down. Like my mum says, you just end up with no trees. Uh, which would be nice, but you know, this beech trees are great for if you want to fill your gutters up in a hurry. Beech trees are ideal, and we've got three of them, four of them, five of them, just within a 30 yard radius of where I'm stood. So, I mean, this place is an ideal uh, uh, leaf catcher, really, for, for gutters. So, we've got that to contend with. But yeah, there we are. Anyway, um, I'm going to uh, try and get my dog jobs done a bit earlier tonight. I've got a load of eggs to go and sort out now because I'm a bit behind. And uh, we'll see what happens tomorrow. Catch up with you there. I just picked up this uh, <coughs> weekend feeder, they call them. Um, it's a bit battered, it's missing a bar there, which I didn't notice in the photo, but and it needs a bit some new timbers put in it, but it's, it's a hell of a thing, I didn't realise how big it was, it's 10 foot long, so it fit like it fit in one of these bays in a gap, um, and the idea is that you put sort of two, two bales of silage in it, in it, and it should keep making its way to the front. And uh, you can go away for the weekend. That's why they call it a weekend feeder. I didn't know that, but you learn something new every day, don't you? So I thought it's just quite a lot of stuff, really, for what I paid for it. And it'd be quite handy just to make a temporary pen this winter. But that's it now. I'm not buying anything else now. I think I've got enough projects on the go. Um, just need to rattle through some, get some work done. It's a fair old job feeding these calves. Now I've got 20, 21 calves on milk and only one three bar feeder. With new teats, so it takes a quite a while feeding them now. So. But yeah, it's all good really. Yeah, we've had a nice day. So I just tried to spit a bit when I got home, so I backed it in under the shed because I had some got some corn on. 
he's just spitting a bit but on the whole it's been a really windy uh, warm day so quite pleased yeah as i said the other day that land rover was leaking oil and, I, and we were dreading what it was um but i, I topped the oil up left it running i started it up and uh, this was a couple of days ago left it running because it didn't start leaking straight away but after 10 minutes of it running it started pouring out and I managed to have a look underneath and found where it was coming from it was just a loose pipe um, yeah it was just it was just a loose pipe that was uh, right must be going to or from the oil cooler so right next to the, where the oil filter is and it, it was just a metal coupling and I just tightened it up and it that cured it so god that was a relief i think we were all relieved because we were i think mark was wrapping his brains trying to uh, think what on earth what on earth was wrong with it now so i better go and register these cars on before i forget i'm usually uh, I'm usually late doing it so yeah, another day gone. This bit of ground here, I've almost killed killed the grass, put absolutely plastered muck on this field at the well, it'd have been like I don't know November time because it's it's really dry. It never really gets wet, so I thought I'd blow it. I had I had a spread a load of muck, so I've plastered it. I mean, so this is what quarter of an acre. I normally mow it. Um, I don't know. It was quite a nice field. We used to have it as a wedding venue, and we used to keep it a lot more tidy before we started putting the bales there. Um, it's quite well drained. It doesn't really lie. It's quite sandy soil. It doesn't really uh, lie wet. So it's one of them. You just don't know what to do with it. Last year, I managed to. Well, last two years, I've managed to mow it, and uh, when he comes with his baler to bale the rest of the side you just I rub it all up into one row and it normally makes about half a bale so I was hoping with all the muck I've put on it it might get like three quarters of a bale this year maybe it's certainly a different colour anyway to what it was so yeah my mum's been having a right good hack in this uh, alongside this pond they all used to be very uh, picturesque, these ponds, back when, when, me, uh, when my granddad took it on, it was all very well looked after. And, um, my grandparents and my mum sp have spent a lot of time over the years maintaining it. Because um, there was, there was like, there's pathways around each pond, there's like four ponds. And uh, I mean, it's all very overgrown and a mess now because I just uh, I haven't got the interest all the time to, to do it. And to be fair, it, it takes a lot of looking after. And you know, we used to back when we used to have the nursery here, people used to just come and have a walk around for free, you know, wasn't it? And the amount of work that went into maintaining it, it was a lovely place to come and have a walk around in the afternoon, but. There's no, you know, couldn't warrant doing it. It was a bit a full-time job for a gardener. So, unless you're really passionate about it, it's really not, you want to be getting people paying to come and have a mooch round, really, or you'd need a bit of a, another out, outlet, like a little coffee shop or something. But anyway, yeah, my mum's, my mum enjoys doing it, so. All right, so I'll go and do some office work. Yeah, wind damage report. We've had a uh, very windy uh, day yesterday and last night and this morning. It's settled down now. But yeah, I was just walking past this greenhouse and the bloody saw the, all the glass on the floor. It's typical, it's one of the ones that we replaced. I was looking around trying to find what it is that broke it, but I think what happened is that's a vent and we must have untied it it should be tied on with this uh to the frame 
to stop it blowing up, blowing up. And I think what's happened, the wind's gone in here, lifted it up and it's just fallen down, smashed. So that was our own stupid fault. I didn't even think, I didn't even realize we'd untied it, but we must've untied it to, we took the frame down and put the new piece of glass in before we lifted it back up. So, and looking at it, there's another one here that, we've, that we need to tie back on as well. There's a piece of glass over there that we've replaced that's got a big crack in it. Um, and it looks as though there's a branch fallen off over there and landed. But it doesn't look as though it's smashed anything. It's just landed on the gutter. So I thought we got away without any damage. And then this morning, it must, it must have happened in the early hours of this morning. The wind was blowing through the fourth chicken shed. And um, I don't know what it was that's uh, spooked them but something spooked them and they've all uh, crowded at the end of the shed and uh, smothered a load there's about 20 dead ones in the, in a corner this morning which doesn't happen very often uh, we don't get that happening very often but that shed is the the worst shed for um, getting wind blowing it quite often you know it blows the flaps down or it'll blow something in the shed it'll like blow blow one of the windows down or something it doesn't take a lot for them to just spook and they must have all flown to the end of the shed and just pile up in a big heap and the ones at the bottom obviously suffocated so that was a bit of a bloody blow this morning but it does happen i thought we'd uh, we were pretty out of the most of the wind uh, related problems here but so yeah happy days another pe well i think we should have plenty of glass coming our way these are these uh glass stillages that we're gonna sort of put back in use ignore this thing on the top it's just a frame um they want sitting on a pallet this wants some new timbers putting across something a bit heavier than that um for the glass to sit on and then you fill uh, you fill this section and then I just need to cut some like uh, triangle wedges to fasten it all tight. And uh, they seem to transport all, all right if like that. Because by the time you've got them full, there's that much weight all, you know, in the pallet itself. They travel uh, all right on a trailer. They don't really bounce around because they're that bloody heavy. And if you've got them all wedged up nice and tight, ideally you want some polystyrene behind them, but I think timber will, just pieces of wood will do the same job if we can't find any. There is a few bits of polystyrene kicking about. But. So yeah, I think and I hope I've got three of them. And so I'm hoping the majority of the glass from this green ass is going to go in them. And then what we'll do with it then, I don't know. Uh, either sell it or use it or keep it for, for repairing this bloody thing. So... Oh, it drives you mad, doesn't it? It's never ending, never ending jobs. But yeah, we had a really, apart from the wind, we had a really nice day yesterday. It was dry all day, windy, but it rained a hell of a lot in the night. It woke me up raining and it's raining again now, so can't win. Yeah, just having a bit of a quiet day. Today I've had to go and run out of egg boxes. I don't know whether I've already mentioned it in this video. Ordered egg boxes that were supposed to arrive last week and they never turned up, so I've completely run out. Haven't got enough to do my orders for tomorrow morning, Monday morning, so I'm in a bit of a mess. So I went to get some, borrow some off a friend of mine this morning, and the bloody motorway was shut. About four, four junctions of motorway shut. I had to drive miles round, and then I, when I came back, the the, mo the motorway on the other side of the road coming back was open and I drove we drove down and ha I had a look and not a single thing going on there was two men at each end uh, look at Jip's after a B two men at each end standing making sure that no one comes on the motorway not a single person working on the motorway not a digger well we saw one digger but it was parked up and I thought bloody hell and there was traffic you know for miles around you know the amount of inconvenience that's caused for no reason they've been working on the motorways at night and the signs up everywhere are saying it's shut from nine o'clock till six o'clock in the morning 
which is fair enough but why they've decided to leave it shut during the day I know it's a Sunday but yeah there was some blooming traffic going because it's right it's in a busy area it's not like in the middle of nowhere so the diversion was through town but yeah it drives you mad doesn't it you just think there's some lack of organization somewhere you know if I were them blokes that were stood there monitoring the um, the closure you just think you know what a what a crap job that is you know you'd feel like a right pillar wouldn't you but anyway so I suppose it just goes over people's head but. so I'm going to end this video here now it's uh, not a lot gone on in this one but just got to grips with these calves it's taken a while to feed them but now they're all drinking it's not so bad but uh, yeah hopefully we get a bit done I've got plenty of projects on the go for this week but it is uh, Easter holidays so that might slow me down a little bit anyway. thanks for watching see you in the next one